Hey there, welcome back. This is Ona with Art of Awakening. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about a subject that a lot of people ask me about, and that is how do I connect with my guides? And there are three main categories of ways that you can connect with your guides. I'm going to go into that in a little bit. Um, first, I'm going to talk a little bit about that whole concept of connecting with your guides. So if uh, you're not familiar with me, um, you can kind of think of me as a, a GPS to your genius zone. I work with people who are feeling spiritually or creatively uh, confused or blocked to help you to, to reconnect uh, with your own GPS, your own inner GPS. It's really not about me being a GPS. I'm really showing you the lay of the land, but it's really about finding your own GPS, your own inner guidance that helps you to find your path, your own truth, so that you can make the impact in the world that you want to make if you want to do that or simply just live the life that uh, is very fulfilling to you. Um, okay, so that said, let's talk about connecting with your guides. And I guess I, I um, the way I think of it is that Yes, it's always it's really exciting to connect with your like your spirit animal guides, your angels, ascended masters, uh, you know any other uh, uh, guides that you have. Um, but I think sometimes it's like we put. Sometimes it's it's really easy to get really fixated on connecting with the guides, and where sometimes I think. What we really need to be um, keeping in mind is that really it's about the guidance, okay? And that ultimately um, comes from source and of course through your higher self, which is your direct connection with source, okay? So really we're, we're looking at um, aligning with the higher self and operating more and more from the higher self rather than the lower ego. Of course, the ego does play an important role but um, you know, the more we can bring in the higher self, the more we're going to be really, really aligned with Source and, and walking this path of um, you know manifesting your highest reality. Okay, so um, so where do the guides fit in? Um, okay, there's this this can get really esoteric, and I don't pretend. To know all the answers of what this is and in fact any time that you hear me talking about something if it doesn't resonate with you <laughs> set it aside okay take from this what works for you um, because ultimately you are the one that's in the driver's seat your higher self you're the one that this is really really about okay and so keep that in mind when working with any guides whether it's um, um, flesh and blood guides uh, such as myself or any spiritual guides and that includes you know the, the big powerful ones like Archangel Michael okay it's it's still they're here to support you okay they're here to support you in stepping into your zone of genius okay your zone of genius is your Dharma that is what you how you were really meant to operate um, you know to you have a special magic that only you can bring to the world, okay? And it's it's when we start stepping into our genius zone that we really bring that into the world and um, I want to say ennoble the world with, with like really the truth of who you are. Um, so, so working with the guides, just keep that in mind. It's like it's really easy to want to... Um, <laughs> want them to tell us what to do right and and it's it's like we always we always want to be told what to do because it's so much easier right it's so much easier just tell me what to do tell me the steps steps that I need to take we're moving into this time of awakening where each one of us really um, is being called to tune into our own inner guidance and make those decisions okay from what we're guided to do from source, right? And the guides are here to help us to orient ourselves and to help us expand our awareness so that we can see from a little bit different perspectives than than from our own little, you know, spot on the earth, right? Our higher self sees all this, right? So 
you already know the answers. You already have the map of the land, right? You already know where you where you are you're at. You know what your purpose is. You know all this. So all of us guides, you know, um, myself, any other people that are uh, helping you, your pets, whatever, um, we're all teachers for each other, right? Um, but also the spiritual guides, they're only here to remind you of what you already know, right? To help you to expand your awareness and, um, you know, rather than sometimes they can come in and say, hey, look, this is the way, right, right now. Because sometimes we need that. We Sometimes we need that little signpost saying, this is the way to Minneapolis, right, for going to Minneapolis. Um, but when we start looking for that consistently and, and, and wanting that all the time, then it's like, that's when we start to wander in circles because really what the universe is waiting for us is to, you know, begin to realize and know our own direction from our heart. Okay, so it's really about operating from the heart. And I hope this is making sense to you. So, um, now that we've kind of gone over that concept, and um, I, I do want to um, say that it is, it can be extremely helpful and it can be a wonderful experience to connect with the guides. There are many, many ways to do this. And if this is something that you've been struggling with, stay tuned because I'm going to go over like three main ways to connect with the guys. And there's many like sub ways in, in, in within each one of those. Um, but I'm not gonna do that here because <laughs> my dog has been telling me it's such a beautiful day outside. What are you doing? What are we doing inside? Uh, we gotta go for a walk. So I'm gonna take her for a walk. I'm gonna take you down to the lakeshore uh, to this beautiful little spot that I know and I'll, I'll talk about then these three main ways to connect with your guides. So see you in just a, a moment. Hey, welcome back. Isn't this beautiful? It's, I love the spot. It's only a couple blocks from my new home and not a lot of people know about it. So it's usually um, pretty, pretty quiet here, um, pretty private. Okay, so um, the first way to connect with your guides is what I call just invoking them calling them in okay and this is simply just just being aware of them and bringing them into your presence and this you can do this in a number of ways simply speaking their name or thinking their name will do it um, it can be looking at a picture that is a symbol of them or a picture of the guide um, it could be through singing a mantra devoted or saying a prayer that's devoted to them. Um, any of these ways will actually bring that energy of the guide to you. Um, you know, maybe if it's an animal, like, um, you know, wearing a, a symbol with an animal, something like that. Um, all this stuff, it actually does bring the energy of, of that, whatever guide it is, around you. Um, if you want to go further with this, you can, first of all, ask. Like, if you're really looking for that communication with the guides, if you want them to start actually communicating with you, um, first of all, realize that everybody, they're going to communicate with different people in different ways, okay? So, and a lot of that has to do with, you know, what is your genius zone? What is your purpose? Um, you know, some people like, like, I am a communicator. That's who I am. I. So, so that's part of my genius is to be a communicator, and so I, I tend to find it a little easier to, um, you know, bring in that communication. Um, but remember that, like, think of the different ways that you communicate with other people. Like, you, you communicate with your your dog non-verbally right usually well you, you you speak them too but there's a lot of ways that you communicate with them that you certainly wouldn't communicate with um you know with your boss right <laughs> your dog and your boss two different things um like a, a, a toddler you'd speak to in a different way and the guides will speak to different people in different ways too um some of those ways are going to be very non-verbal and some of them will be very subtle like for instance if you go up to somebody and simply lay your hand on their shoulder um, that that you can communicate reams of information doing just a simple gesture like that but it can be easily 
easily overlooked, right? Um, you know, somebody else might not even notice that you're doing that. So part of it is just like, you know, you may not see them, you may not actually hear them, um, but be open, okay? So that, that comes down to, um, next thing is actually just to ask if you want more communication to request it because uh, sometimes it's like they're, they don't necessarily, aren't necessarily gonna come forward with, with more communication unless you ask for it. Um, and then the third is to really be open to the signs. And I, would, I was about to say watch for the signs, um, you know, because like watch for how they're gonna communicate, but really I think the word watch, we tend to want to focus and actually actively look for things. It's really more of a passively sharpening your awareness. Uh, like you're starting to really pay attention to everything around you, okay? Pay more attention to what's going on around everything around you. And as you do this, as you start opening your eyes and opening your ears and listening for things, um, you know, just in general, opening your awareness to what's going on, um, you're going to find that things come into your awareness much more easily. And it's most likely, almost always, it's going to be when you are least expecting it, when you're not actually expecting it, that you're going to get these signs in. And again, they can be um, emotions. They can be maybe words that come into your head. Maybe it's over overhearing a conversation, right? Um, or it could be uh, seeing something. It could be actually direct communication, but sometimes it's just signs, symbols, okay? Um, universe speaks a lot in symbols. So learning to be aware of um, what is a symbol, things that jump out at you, those are things to pay attention to. Okay, so I'm gonna move over to the lake shore for the next segment of here. We'll, we'll look at the second way in just a bit. Okay, so here we are at the shore of Lake Superior. And let's talk about this uh, second major way, kind of main category of ways to connect with your guides. And um, that is simply to use your active imagination. Okay, so um, a lot of times when people are first turning, learning to, to tune in to spirits, um, they'll be like, oh, I'm just making this up. <laughs> well, yes and no, I mean, because we, that's how spirit communicates with us a lot of times is through the imagination, okay? So there's a difference between um, deciding, oh, we're gonna do this, you know, this is what's happening, which is your ego mind speaking, and um, opening up to receive, um, you know, just imaginative uh, insights, okay? So we're gonna use the act of imagination. Um, so if there's a particular guide you want to uh, connect with, maybe kind of imagine, that, well, the first, most simplest way is to simply imagine that guide, okay? Imagine them, imagine feeling their energy around you, okay? And that can, in and of itself, can be very powerful. Um, but then we can move a little bit more deeply into that and start really engaging the imagination, opening up, feel that guide, bring their energy around you, and then just open to it. Um, <laughs> I know that's simple to say. One way is to just start dialoguing, so talking to the guide, right? Um, and, and it may be just like a one-sided conversation at first. You can just, but you can actually just keep talking to them, keep talking to them, and at some point you can almost like role-playing a sort of step into actually becoming that guide. And, okay, well, you know, if you're, like, say, playing a role-playing game or if you're an improv actor on stage, it's exactly what you can do with, um, with the guides. And they will actually, you will actually get these insights that are, and, and you'll look at them later and it's like, oh, that really wasn't me. I mean, I, I didn't come up with that. I, I could never have come up with that. Okay, so um, you can do it, like, you can record yourself, you can journal you can write do it in a journal um you can that that is a very powerful way to connect or through artwork so this is why the arts are such a powerful thing and incidentally why uh the powers that be have uh, in the past uh, 100 years or so just really put the quash on funding for the arts is because the arts really do offer a powerful way to connect with higher guidance um so 
uh, you know, anything that's that those creative arts is a wonderful way to uh, use that active act imagination. You can intentionally do it to connect with your guides, and um, so that actually this leads to the um, the third main way of connecting with your guides, which I'll get to in just a sec. Hey there. So the third way is really an extension of the second way, the act of imagination. Okay. And this is bona fide channeling. Okay. And so this is really, this really gets super advanced. I don't really do this. <laughs> um, honestly, to be honest, you know, if, but if you think of somebody like, like, um, Abraham Hicks or, or Cryon, um, these are people who have taken the act of imagination to such a point where they actually lose themselves and the guide actually just takes over and speaks through them. Um, honestly, I, I would not necessarily encourage anybody to uh, go this route, uh, I mean, unless you have huge amounts of experience. Um, and, you know, like I said, take what I say and, you know, if it doesn't resonate with you, that's fine. Just just set it aside. Take take what works for you. Um, but personally, I think it. I, I I would encourage anybody who's just starting out working with guides. Don't try to get into the channeling too fast. Like if you're drawn in that direction, whatever. If it happens to you, fine. But um, this is just my personal feeling: is that there, are not every spirit out there necessarily has your best interest in, interest in mind and. Um, and there are some wonderful, incredibly benevolent spirits, and I have nothing against channeling. I think there's some wonderful things, like the two that I mentioned, great, and that there's many others. Um, but just go go into it with full awareness, right? That, uh, that, that it's... I think those people that are doing it successfully have gotten to a point of, first of all, being very, very attuned to who they are. I, I'm, I'm hoping this anyway, and, and at least have developed a very, very trusting relationship with a, a spirit that hopefully is very beneficial to them. Um, but I think it's very, very important to be extremely um, centered in who you are, actually before, um, before you know, giving yourself up to any kind of any kind of uh, spiritual being other than yourself, right? And I think for most of us, for most of us, um, the, the path, the journey is really coming into ourselves, okay? Because most of us have lost parts of ourselves along the way, and we're really on this journey of reclaiming ourselves, and there's plenty of time, there's plenty of time. Um, we don't have to do everything at once, right? So, again, it's up to you. You are in the driver's seat, so you will make your own decisions, of course, and that's as it should be. Um, so I don't feel like I'm telling you what to do, but <laughs> just, just, just my own feeling is that um, there's, there's plenty of other ways, you know, a little bit more elementary ways, and you can stay with those elementary ways. In fact, you don't even actually need to connect with the guides, right? You don't. I have a friend who um, is an Orthodox Jewish woman, and she's like, in our tradition, we just don't. We don't work with the angels. We don't work with the guides. We work directly with Source, and that's it. Um, and that's there. That that is as powerful as it comes, right? Uh, you don't have to connect with the guides. Not everybody is meant to have all these big long conversations with spiritual guides. You know, uh, so so feel into it. Is this is this something that I really need to do, um, or or you know, is it enough to simply get more and more attuned to my own higher guidance? So either way, it's all good, right? <laughs> okay, so um, I hope this has helped, and in just a moment um, we'll go back to the studio. I'll pull a card for the fall coming week, and I'll show you. Um, the painting of Quan Yin, which I just finished. All right, so uh, catch you in just a bit. Okay, welcome back to the studio. If you've enjoyed this, if you haven't yet subscribed, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button, hit the bell if you want to be notified of uh, future videos. I'm going to be pulling a card here in just a sec, uh, just shuffling. Um, 
I'm going to be uploading a video every Sunday. And um, I always love to hear your comments. So anything that you have to add, all of you have wisdom to tap into. And when you share that, other people benefit. Okay, so let's pull an animal card for the coming week. And what I got is bear. Okay. So first the words that are coming to my head is hunker down. Um, okay, this time of year in the Northern Hemisphere where I'm at, bears are, um, they're foraging, they're getting fat. <laughs> you know, they're, they're kind of taking care of themselves. And they're probably like, we've had a pretty warm fall. It's still pretty warm out there, but pretty soon those winds are going to start blowing. The winter is, uh, the snow is going to start falling. Um, so they're probably kind of looking for a place to hunker down. Um, this is a wonderful time of year um, to sit, be still, hibernate. Um, so just kind of maybe think ahead in terms of the winter season. It's going to be uh, always, it's always hectic, right? It's not really meant to be hectic. So see if you can do a little bit of advanced advanced planning this week in terms of carving out a little time for yourself throughout the winter season to come into that stillness and that is ultimately where the most powerful way I think to connect with your higher self is sometimes just to really come into stillness um, you know, whether that is deep meditation, uh, clearing your mind, clearing your space. Sometimes the stillness is just about uh, simplifying, simplifying everything in your life. And when we clear things out, it will often leave room for that guidance to come in. All right. So, oh yes, I promised you I would show you this uh, painting of Quan Yin last time uh, I had just started it. Um, here she is, <laughs> and I think what I will do is, um, it, uh, like, just uh, the consensus was that it was Quan Yin because I had actually tuned into Mother Mary, and this is what came out. And uh, last last week it was kind of half done, and I was feeling like it was a nature fairy, and there is to me still sort of that nature fairyish <laughs> feel to it, but. Uh, subscribers and, and viewers were pretty unanimous that's Quan Yin so like as I started painting it more and finishing it was like oh yeah <laughs> definitely I'll go with that consensus there so um Quan Yin and I will actually uh, shoot a better, better picture of this and post it as a post uh, so you can see it if you want um all right so with that thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you again next week